provoked to ponder. Brought to you by Apostolic Aya. Greetings in Jesus' name. I'm Bishop Chester Wright, and this is the next episode of Provoked to Ponder. COVID was difficult on everyone. That is a gross understatement, isn't it? And so many of us prayed and prayed and prayed for God to take COVID away. We did spiritual warfare to bind it, rebuke it. How'd that work out for you? It didn't work. Paul experienced something similar to that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, the scripture says, because of the abundance of revelations he had, there was given unto me a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me because of the abundance of revelation. And he said, I prayed three times for God to take that away. And the Lord's answer every time was, no, my grace is enough. My grace is sufficient. God didn't cause COVID, but it's impossible for COVID to have happened without his permission. And since it happened with his permission, that's why our prayers didn't work against it because it was happening with God's permission. And this is a very short video, so I don't have time to go into all of that. I would love to spend some time going into the word of God on that. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll be able to do that. But the problem that we have is we have so many people uh, that our prayers are for the purpose of God fixing things because we don't understand the importance of the paths that God chooses for us to walk. What is the ultimate purpose of those paths? That we might know him better than we ever had before. This is exactly what COVID revealed. COVID revealed first and foremost who had a personal relationship with God and who did not. In in direct connection with that, COVID also revealed those whose salvation was dependent upon attending church services for them to have any faith at all. They had no walk with God for themselves. They had no way to have a relationship with God. They had no way to feed themselves from the word of God. So they were totally dependent on having a church service to attend where someone else who did all the work and all the praying would feed them something so they didn't have to do any work in feeding themselves. Well, the Lord let that go on for months and months and months, long enough to reveal who it was that did not know him, who it was that could not have a relationship with him without their codependency upon church services. And they say, preacher, this is, this is horrible. What you're saying is horrible. No, what I'm saying is biblical. Biblical. And I'm prepared to defend every single phrase of every statement I've made already on this video with an abundance of scripture. I'd be happy to do that. The problem is, if uh, these things aren't true, then a whole lot of people's prayers miserably failed. And a lot of people uh, no longer were in church after the few months that they couldn't go to church. When they found out the world wasn't going to come to an end if they didn't go to church, it was real easy not to go back. And many decided that, you know, this uh, streaming church is good enough. I'm fulfilling whatever obligation I have. And uh, so I don't need to go to church and, and all of that. The purpose of this uh, video series is to provoke you to ponder. Paul, uh, in one of his greatest messages, 
speaking to heathen. And I differentiate because every city Paul went to, he went to the Jews first. And he preached to the Jews until they rejected what he was preaching. Then he would go to the Gentiles. So he was in uh, Athens. He was waiting on a couple of uh, his co-workers to uh, arrive so that he could go to the next thing. And they took him up to uh, Mars Hill. And uh, the scripture says, Acts 17, 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. What is superstitious? When I participate in religion, including church, including oneness Pentecostalism church, out of fear, out of uh, 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 some kind of earning or attempting to earn my salvation by by what I do, and uh, and, and I, I'm afraid that God's going to be mad at me if I don't do No, 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 no. Uh, I, I heard a preacher say the other day that the minute he said I do, he had a honeydew list waiting on him. Well, every good husband knows what a honeydew list is. And that honeydew list is not required of me to love my wife. That's, I love my wife, whether I do the honeydew list or not. And I believe she would agree with that. But I do the honeydew list because I want to. I want to do things that make her life easier than better. And so the superstitious, they don't know God. They're afraid of this God they don't know. And this is what Paul said. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. And then he went on to preach this powerful message to heathen, not to Jews that knew the one true God, but to those that didn't know the one true God, who had who feared God or the gods. And so to, in order to make sure they didn't leave anybody out that would be mad at them, they had an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. And uh, Paul said, uh, this, this, is, this is the one I've come to declare to you. I can't declare the unknown God to those that don't know him if I don't know him. The first principle of the gospel is freely you've received, freely give. Well, let's go the other way. If I can't give something, it's because I haven't received something. So if I can't share with people my knowledge of this God that I know, not know about him, but know him. If I can't passionately talk about this God that I know and love, it's because I don't know and love him. Because if I know and love him, it is not hard to talk about him. When they commanded the apostles to not preach or teach in his name, they said, you know, you, you decide whether that's okay. We can't help but speak the things which we have seen and heard. We can't keep this to ourselves. We can't be quiet about this. We know him. We know him. And we can't help but tell people about this one we know and how awesome he is. And then Paul comes along and uh, he gives us these scriptures that are just absolutely amazing. And they're, they're not a, a, a point provoked to ponder message uh, because there's, you, you, couldn't, you need two or three lessons at least just to cover each verse of Philippians 3, 7 through 11, but I'm going to read them. But what things were gained to me? I read this just the other day, that the word things is in the plural, but the gain is in the singular. So he lumped all, everything that was of value to him, lumped it together as gain, and he said, I counted all of that but loss, again, that's singular, for Christ. He lumped everything together as this one overall thing of everything that was gained to him, and he counted that loss for Christ. The word loss there is a noun. It's a singular noun. 
Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Don't look up that Greek word dung because you won't be willing to, to use that terminology uh, in speaking to people because it is, it is the Greek word for excrement. Paul was being very, very literal. That these things he had given up for Christ, he counted them, he counted them so lost that it was no different than his body being relieved of excrement. Now that's, that's, that's counting that. Why? That I may win Christ. That I may win Christ. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. I count all this that I've lost. Everything, all those things, plural, that were gained to me. I count all of them as a loss for Christ. Because I want to win Christ. I want the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. And be found in Him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him. And the word know here means to, to know experientially, to know relationally, not just intellectually. That I may know Him. And He named two ways that we get to know the Lord personally. We get to know the person of God personally. And that is that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That's where we all started. We all started with being buried with Christ in water baptism and resurrected with Christ in the newness of life through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We all, so we all got, we, all of our journey in knowing God started with the resurrection. But that's not how most of us deepen our knowledge of him and the fellowship of his sufferings. This word fellowship here is a, is a powerful word. It is the Greek word konoia, which means to have a portion or share or participate in something with someone else where you share equally with them. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. He said, uh, if they hated me, your master, they're going to hate you too. He said, beware when all men speak well of you. And he goes on and on and on. He, he, he talks about the fact that we're going to suffer. Not because we've done wrong. Because it's in that suffering that we draw close to him and we, we deepen our personal knowledge of him. Our relational knowledge of him deepens in our times of trial and suffering. So Paul said, I, I, I count all this for lost for Christ, that I, I would know the, have the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, and, and, and I want to win Christ, and I, and I want to be in Him, and I want to have His righteousness, and I want to know Him. The power of His resurrection, and through the fellowship of His suffering, being made conformable unto His death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I want to know him in trial and test so that I might know him in the final resurrection. He's coming for those that know him. He said, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many would, he said, many would say unto me, will say unto me in that day, in the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name. And in thy name we've cast out devils. And in thy name we've done many wonderful works. And he said, I'm going to say unto them, depart from me. I never knew you. You're a worker of iniquity. Wait a minute. They, they called him Lord, Lord. They emphasized the name, which is what people do. They're baptized in the name. And they had the manifested power of God working in them through prophesying, casting out devils, and doing miracles. 
And he said, I never knew you. Well, how can that be? Because he, the Greek word there doesn't mean he had no knowledge of them. It means he never had a relationship with them that he approved of. He never approved of his relationship with them. They didn't know him. Therefore, he did not know them in a relationship. And it cost them their souls. I lost some people very close to me during COVID. I, I miss them to this day. But I don't begrudge anybody who had the opportunity uh, to finish this race, run their course, and receive their crown. I don't begrudge anybody that. I, I, I don't feel bad for them. I feel bad for me because I miss them. Well, knowing him, knowing him is about being with him here and now. He promised that he was going to go and prepare a place for us that where he is, there we can be also. There's a lot of people that go to church for one reason. They don't want to go to hell. They're not going to church because they want to go to heaven, because they want to be with Jesus, the God that they know so well. No, it's not Jesus they want to go be with. In fact, the only reason they want to go to heaven is they just don't want to go to hell. You know, that might be okay in the beginning. That might be okay in the beginning. God might tolerate that in the beginning of your walk with him. But somewhere along the line, I need to know him. Somewhere along the line, I need to hunger and thirst for him. Somewhere along the line. And if I don't, if my whole relationship with him is what I, about what I'm against, I'm against hell, I'm against going there, I'm against worldly stuff, I don't want that, rather than all of that shit, all of that, okay, that, yeah, that, that, that happens, but that's not, I'm not, I, I'm not a child of God because I don't want to go to hell. I'm a child of God because I want to go be with him for eternity. I want to be with him for eternity. He's promised. I'm holding him to that promise. I want to be with him forever. Forever. I want to be with him forever. Because I know him. Because I love him. And I know he loves me. I pray that you are provoked by this word today. Not provoked to anger, but provoked to good works. I pr pray that somehow a, 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 a taste, taste and see the Lord is good, that a taste would be enough to cause you to hunger for him. I want more of that. I want more of that. I pray that that is what happens to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, I pray that you're provoked to hunger to know him in Jesus' name. Amen.